Hey everybody, welcome back. This is the intro to conditionals. Relatively quick video, although I might ramble for a while, so it might not be that quick of a video, but the idea that we're introducing here is relatively simple. Let's talk about what we've learned so far. We've learned about basically the data types, and then we've learned a bunch of different ways to interact with those, and every time we've been interacting with those data types, it's been inside of a function, which is a pretty decent way to think about almost all of the code that you'll write in JavaScript is that just picture it's happening inside of a function. Um, the exact details of how that goes down are not as simple as everything is inside of a function, but it's a good working kind of like approach to, to JavaScript. So with that in mind, we've got our operators and our methods and our data types, and now, but, but up until this point, it's pretty much just been the input to your function is this, do this to it, return something, which, you know, is a pretty good start, but at this point is where things start to get fun or annoying, depending on, you know, your temperament, and if things are getting really annoying, you might want to consider that this is just the difficult part that happens at the beginning and that things will get better, or maybe programming itself is not necessarily for you, and you would be better suited in a role you know, around developers or in a uh, slightly more client-facing uh, situation. But but that's that's what you're up to here. Um, but to be sure, if this course is just not really doing it for you, there are tons of other ways to do this to learn the introduction to JavaScript. Um, there's Udacity. Uh, there's a different version of the course that's probably going to be at the end of the material. Um, but in any case, definitely don't run away from programming in total just because you don't like this course. Um, yeah, that would be a, that would be a bad idea. Uh, but that said, the idea of regularly consulting documentation and solving problems that grow in increasing complexity, uh, that kind of is programming development, so to speak. So um, keep in mind, if that's something that you're enjoying and you really get a, uh, you know, a nice kick out of, of solving the problems and seeing that uh, green check mark, then you're probably in the right place. If you hate all of this and you're just dragging yourself through it, maybe give yourself a little bit more time. But at the same time as that, you know, this is a good thing to consider before you get... Uh, you know, what is it, 17, 18 grand into debt over this? So anyway, uh, our programs have been doing something, but not really based on a condition. So now we're going to introduce the idea of a condition. And this is where the real world examples tend to be a little bit easier to come up with, uh, which is to say, hey, I need a portion of a string. It's like, I don't really know why you would have a real world example that does that. But something like this, if it's raining, you should wear a raincoat. So if you're thinking about the way that you would uh, program this, this is where something called a conditional comes in. So we could describe whether it's raining, and if it is, describe some way that you would wear a raincoat. Um, if Creed will be there, then I will go, otherwise I will stay home. So the first one was just a single condition. If it's raining, wear a raincoat. In the second one, we have two possibilities. One is Creed is there, and in that case, I, whoever I is, will go. And if Creed is not there, and that's what this otherwise implies, uh, I will stay home. Now in the third one, excuse me, um, I don't know if you can hear that, but it sounds like somebody's either drilling or torturing a cat. I hope it's not the cat part. But anyway, uh, for the third one, if Denny's is open, we will dine there. Otherwise, if IHOP is open, we will dine there. And finally, if neither diner is open, we will make pancakes at home. So pancakes regardless, but you want to consider that this is an example of something that we'll end up calling an if statement. This is something that we'll call an if-else statement, and this is something called an if-else-if -if statement. And the idea for this is that um, we start with these English language sentences, and then we talk about how we would write those in pseudocode. Now, previously our pseudocode has been more kind of like notes, and sometimes the lines will take up two lines, which ends up being one line in code. We're going to start edging towards having our pseudocode represent one line of actual code. And the idea is that it's not as difficult to reason about pseudocode during an interview as it is to reason about code. Chances are that if you write some code, you want that code to work, so you'll keep writing additional code to try to make whatever you've already written work, whereas if you have pseudocode, it's a lot easier to get rid of it, it's a lot easier to generate it. Um, however, like actual code, it takes a little bit to get used to the rhythm um, and certain shortcuts of ways that you can describe things that'll always mean the same thing during pseudocode, but most of that is a little bit too kind of out of left field for now. So let's talk about the pseudocode for each one of these sentences. So for the first one, if it is raining, you should wear a raincoat. So the reason that we indent this is because you should wear a raincoat is something that will only happen in the event that this if it is raining. For the second one, if Creed is there, I will go. So I will go is what we call subordinate to if Creed is there. 
And otherwise, and we're lining up otherwise like this because this is where our else portion of something called an if else statement is going to go. And otherwise, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, I will stay home. And then the third one is our if else if statement. Basically, if Denny's is open, we will dine there. In the event that Denny's is not open, we're going to check to see if IHOP is open. And if it is, we'll dine at IHOP. And then the final portion is basically another else statement. Now, if you're worried about what an if and an else if statement is, uh, don't worry about that. We got a whole bunch of lessons, well, three lessons to go through where we're going to go into significant detail on each one of those. So that's pretty much it. Now that we've figured out what we can do with the language, let's start determining ways that we can do one or other things based on some kind of a condition. And, and that's pretty much it. So uh, we'll go ahead and get started with if statements in the next lesson. But for now, hope you enjoyed this introductory video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.